So we're in Bridgeton, New Jersey, Tri-City Boxing. This kind of gives you an idea of sometimes when a lot of these good gyms with good people don't get a lot of the help they need to support the financial backing. But they make do with it. Try to get these kids off the street, do some good things. Get them in shape, get them in the ring. Take a look over here. See, you got some old school equipment right here. Gets the job done. Like I said, at the end of the day, gyms in different areas, they need a lot of help. They need a lot of support, especially for these amateurs, these young kids. So, try to give them a little more exposure through Journeyman Boxing and journeymanboxing.com. Small ring, teach them to fight close. Little old school method. All right, another edition of Journeyman Boxing, journeymanboxing.com. I'm your host, Rich Quinones. We're in Bridgeton, Tri-City Boxing Gym, and uh, one of the good guys in amateur boxing, Coach Terry Golden. Terry, appreciate you having me come out for a couple moments, and, uh, you know, it, it's amazing. We, we talk about the lost art of having people in the community really uh, take under their wing young kids, but it's obvious you're doing it. You've been doing it for a long time, and talk a little bit about the facility here and kind of the message you're trying to get across. Well... This is Tri-City Boxing, um, located here in South Jersey, Bristol, New Jersey. We've been here since about four years now. It's probably our fourth year. Um, we started, actually we were branched off from the Bristol Pal. In 06, we started the Bristol Pal up. Uh, we had a crew there. We, we got known in the area for Tri-City. Well, actually it was Bristol Pal then. And we basically split, you know, with them and came Tri-City Boxing. And we pretty much know in an area. I got involved in boxing itself, don't amateur. Did a little amateur stuff when I was younger and, and always loved the sport. Muhammad Ali, of course, what got me started, you know. I mean, who didn't get started with Muhammad Ali back in the day? So, after I sat back and, you know, raising kids, got married, raising kids, and two daughters, there was the oldest one. Uh, of course, they didn't go into boxing, so I took it out. I so doing softball, coached them. Then my son, he got into baseball, tried to do football. I coached football for three years. And then we was up in Pensalkin, the old Pensalkin Mart. Sure. And, you know, they had an R&B gym across this mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. Well, they had an open uh, sparring once a month. And you can sign up for this, you can come and do some sparring. Well, my nephew wanted to do it. And I told him, you're going to do it, we got to do it right. And so... Went back home, started training them in the, in the back of my yard, in my gym, in my garage, actually. So my son wanted And I'm like, oh, no, you know. He kind of put me on the spot, really. You know, something I never told, but he, he made me train him by saying, you know, because I said, well, your mom don't want you to box. But he, he made me train him. And like I said, just first time you mentioned this It story. was one of those, don't tell mom. No, it was actually, <laughs> well, mom says, no, but aren't you my dad? <laughs> Don't you have some say? So he put me on the spot. So I had to like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. You want to, you want to do this, right? Right. So that's how I got into it. And once, once his friend knew he was training also, and my nephew, and so we got too big for the garage. And then we start finding gym. That's when we start working to work out warehouse. I knew from way back, Kate's Violin Pal. Sure. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club that yeah. was over there way back with um, Johnson, Marvin Johnson was running it. Yeah. So that's how we basically got started with the boxing itself. And it became more than once. Once my son stopped boxing and his friend, I stayed with the game because we had some kids that was, as I've seen, underprivileged. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody knows boxing is almost a poor man's sport. Right. And when it was underprivileged, and they take them kids, like a little spot from here over the bridge, maybe a 40 mile ride or something, 45 minutes to get over. Just to see the eyes light up on something like that, you know, it's like, wow, you know, I took, well, I take for granted these kids, you know, never been places. So as you start working with these kids and start seeing them, you want to help out. So that's when you start doing the best you can do. And basically other than doing boxing, there's not much, I'm, I'm not a counselor, but in a sense you become a counselor. Sure, you mentor kids. them along you the way. You become a mentor, you become the father figure that they didn't have. So here I am now after my son stopped. 
back in 08. I'm still at it with a whole new bunch. And I look at it for these kids as I would my kids. And that's where we come here. We're a boxing gym, but we're also a family here. You know, you mentioned too, you brought up a good point, um, you know, because let's be honest, uh, Cumberland County, Salem County, when we look at some of those uh, low income areas, um, inner city, um, like a Camden, like a Gloucester, we have it right here uh, in your backyard. And uh, see, a lot of times kids will just kind of disappear into the night, so to speak. Yeah. They'll come in, they'll come and go. You mentioned there's a lot of turnover, um, not because it's cold like an, uh, a meat locker in here, but uh, because of other reasons. But um, how, how, is that the challenge to? You know, if you can keep the consistency, like a young kid, young boxer, consistency in the ring, but keep them coming because you're teaching them life lessons as well. I, I love to see them coming, and I love to really bring that one kid from the amateur into the pro and become successful where maybe people start seeing this is, you know, what I can do, what I can become if I stick with it, you know, hard work, the dedication, and belong to just something. And that's what you really strive for doing. Um, I had one kid that I worked with that was an amateur. Had him since his really his second, his, after his first fight, I hadn't had him. He did turn pro. He don't box no more. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't had some kids that, one, I mean, Ronald Cruz. We, we boxed sure. Ronald Cruz. Yeah, him. sure. I thought we, we won it as I am, but we didn't get the decision. Uh, Could have won it either way. That's amateur boxing. But he didn't, he fought J Rock, Jordan yep. Williams. He didn't fought. Um, Carlos Perez twice and beat the, the uh, Carlos J. Rock, hot prospect. The Carlos Perez, great boxer great, out of Atlantic City, and building his own name. Yes, and stuff going well. I mean, we used to spar with, with Cornfate, and you know he was probably one that was there. But we get the best of him in sure. sparring and, and stuff growing up. To see these guys on TV making money and doing things, and I know what you have, and to see a kid get lost to the streets, you know, out there with the drugs and the gangs. It makes you, you know, that much de more determined to try to do what you can do, whether it's city or whoever helps you out. I do what I can do to help and, these kids. And just to give people kind of an idea, I'm just going to, you stay where you are. I'm just mm -hmm. going to pan a little bit. We talked about sometimes where you don't get funding, you don't have opportunities for proper equipment, and people can see, you know, as we just kind of pan across, kind of what you're dealing with, um, where, as you mentioned, where it's just enough that kind of helps and kind of get you by with the proper equipment. And how about the, the challenges and the obstacles of, of, of really, to be honest, not always having w what you need to help them. I mean, it's always good to have enough to ring, some heavy bags, mitts, some pad work, jump ropes, but a lot of gyms that are right. well furnished and funded, so to speak, in different areas, let's and be quite that, honest. And, and you mentioned earlier about the cold. It's cold here because <laughs> We don't, have, <laughs> yeah, it is. we don't have the money, and I hate to say it like that, but we don't have the money to, to have the electric company turn on the gas because the previous president here ran up a bill, and he wanted like two grand. Yeah. You know, for me to pay the lease and do what I got to do electric. You, war you warned me when I spoke to you to wear a coat, <laughs> so as you told me to wear a coat. coat. <laughs> but, you know, it keeps these kids out of here yeah. motivated. And I'm surprised. I go, I keep a tally of, of my attendance and everybody here. Usually, near the end of January and February and March, and, and then on the backside, November and December, we have pretty much the highest attendance than we do as, as we say July and August. Mm. I don't know what it is and it's cold as on the weather. But the sad part about these kids disappear though. When it gets warm, it starts gets disappearing again. Yeah. And that's the sad part because to have these kids determined to come here and it's cold like this, you know, it, it kinda hurts because you, you get used to these kids. Sure. It, it, like I said, we family. We get kind of used to these kids and you don't start seeing them. Well I'm one of them kind of like like like, like most of the gyms. I'll make that phone call if I have to. I'll come to your house if I have to yeah. see what I can do. You know, find you all on Facebook or, or Twitter, you know, wherever, and try to find out why, what's going on, and try to get you back in here. And sometimes it's a simple fact, you don't have money for for them. Do you turn the kid away because their parents don't have the money? You know, yeah. when you're dealing with 13, 14 year olds, and they're de so determined, you don't want to rob sure. somebody. And that's, that's they're, they're at an age, drugs. too, where they're very... Um, they're very influenced they by, by outside factors. And, so, and You know, what do you do? You turn them on or do you go deeper in your pocket and say, look, don't worry about the membership, come on. Then they get to the point they, they can compete. And I'm going to tell you right now, not all my guys are killers in the ring, you know, this and that. 
but do you stop you from that chance of trying to compete to go places? You know, so you, then again, you might have to go back in your pocket deeper to pay for the restoration. Fee. Right. But you don't want to give up. And, you know, the turnaround, like I said, when they do leave or, or whatever, quit, you do take it kind of a certain way because, you know, these kids have helped out. My guys, you never see them in the ring with, without boxing shoes on, without trunks on, without their outfit. You know, because I always, another little tip, we always, I always say, you can't do it, look the best that's that you right, can. That's right, that's right, fake it, you know, that's so right. My kids might be one of the best dressed boxers in the ring. <laughs> may not be the best skill, but they are the best. And that's because I make sure that they look that way. I've seen guys with, with you know, ball, ball and shorts on, sneakers on, and I'm like, wow, you know. That's right. Why well, didn't the coach could these? You know, throw. tells you they're they're probably unprepared as well. And it's I'm unfortunate, like, but you know. So I, that's for another thing. I try to keep my guys dressed. They say if we don't perform well, at least we look good in the ring. Well, look, it's 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 admirable what you're doing, and definitely I commend you. Um, before I uh, close it up with you, if you want to again plug the gym, if, if you have Facebook, uh, social media, if anyone. Uh, wants to help out with any any type of um, uh, funding or just get the word of mouth out to any boxers out there in the area who also like to uh, check it out. And, and uh, again, once again, I'm Coach Gould. Um, we here at Tri-City Boxing, located 147 Cahansi Street, Bridgeton, New Jersey. Um, right now we don't need to get maybe one or two little pros, but we got some kids that, you know, we will really inspire. My kids, my kids, we don't worry about size, weight, and this and that because it's about getting the work in. We are located on Facebook uh, at Tri City Boxing, and I think we also uh, on Instagram now under the same name. One of my boxers got to be on Instagram. I'm an old guy. The old I'm school guy. Step up with the times. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but yes, we we located. Like I said right here in, in Bridgeton, and uh, we open Monday through Friday, five to eight, providing we don't have competition or something. Sure. You know, an emergency to go in. And um, take another line from my partner that from time to time be here. As you said, you know, like us on Facebook, support us with the checkbooks. That's, 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 that's well done. We appreciate you joining us right, on this edition you. of uh, Journeyman Boxing. And, of course, uh, check us out on journeymanboxing.com. Keep up the great work, Coach. Thank you.